اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان الدین ان اللہ الاسلام بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شوہلی صدری ویسر علی عمری واہل العقد تم السان یف کہ کولی آ ویلکم آل دا ویورز ود اسلامک گریٹنگز السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ می پیس بلیسنگز اینڈ مرسی اف اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی بی آن آل اف یو اینڈ آئی آلسو وش یو رمضان مبارک a very happy month of ramadan today we'll be speaking about islam the universal religion islam comes from the root word salam which means peace salam also means submitting your will to allah subhanahu wa taala so in short islam means peace acquired by submitting your will to allah subhanahu wa taala and a person who submits his will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is called as a Muslim. The Holy Quran says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse number 19, the ayah I quote in the beginning of my talk, inna dina in the wild Islam, the only religion acceptable in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Islam. Most of the religions, they either cater to the soul or only to the body. But Islam, alhamdulillah, is a religion which has got a dual role. It caters to the body as well as to the soul. Most of the other religions, they preach that in order to come closer to Almighty God, you have to renounce the world. You have to lead a life of celibacy. You have to lead a life of monasticism. Indirectly, these religions say that because our parents were not close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, were not close to Almighty God, that's the reason that they were born. Because our parents were far away from religion, far away from God, that's the reason that we were born. Insulting our parents that they were not close to Almighty God. If suppose all the people in the world they agree that let's get close to Almighty God and each and every human being in the world, if they renounce the world, then within 100 to 150 years, humankind will cease to exist on the face of the earth. Thus, you cannot call these religions who say that in order to come closer to Almighty God, you have renounced the world as a universal religion. In fact, in Islam, monasticism is prohibited. And our beloved Prophet said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 7, in the book of Niqah, chapter number 3, hadith number 4, that, O oh, young people, whoever has the means to get married should get married, for it will help you to lower your gaze and guard your modesty. Marrying is compulsory in Islam. And our beloved Prophet said, that anyone who marries completes half his deen. One's wife I was giving a talk during question answer time. Somebody asked me, that does it mean by the Zakir that if I marry twice, I complete my full deen? The person did not understand what did the Prophet mean by saying, marriage completes half your deen. The Prophet meant that marriage prevents you from promiscuity, from fornication, from homosexuality, which are half the evil of society. Only if you marry, do you have an opportunity to be a husband or a wife. Only if you marry, do you have an opportunity to be a father or a mother, which are very important duties in Islam. So irrespective of whether you marry once or twice, yet you only complete half your deen. A prophet said, anyone who does not marry is not of me. Therefore, marriage in Islam is compulsory. There are many people who say that I have spent enough time on dunya dari, now I want to spend my time towards deen. I have spent enough time on the worldly affairs, now I want to spend my time towards religion. These Muslims, they fail to realize that dunya dari is part of deen. Looking after the worldly affairs is part of the religion of Islam. In order to be a good Muslim, you should look after the worldly affairs as well as 
the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which includes a social life as well as a worldly life. Most of the religions, they basically speak good things. They teach its followers that you should not rob, that you should not cheat, that you should not rape. All the major religions teach good things. So what is the difference between Islam and the other major religions? The difference between Islam and the other religions is that Islam, besides teaching its followers to do good things, it shows you a way how to achieve that goodness, how to achieve the state of goodness. For example, all the religions, including Islam, say that you should not rob. So what is the difference between Islam and the other ways of life? Islam, besides telling not to rob, it shows you a way how to achieve that state in which no one will rob. It also tells you a system of zakat, that every rich person who has a saving of more than the nisab level, 85 grams of gold, he should give 2.5% of that saving every lunar year in charity, it's called as zakat. And if suppose any person robs, the Islamic Sharia says, according to the Holy Quran, Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 38, which says, that as to the thief, be it a man or a woman, chop off his or her hand as a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if anyone robs, the Islamic Sharia says, chop off his hands. People may think that what sort of a barbaric religion is the Holy Quran? Chopping off the hands in this age of science and technology? It's a barbaric religion. It's a barbaric way of life. And they feel that if you go to Saudi Arabia, every second person you come across, you will find his hands to be chopped off. I've been to Saudi Arabia several times. I have not come across a single human being whose hands have been chopped off. Surely there will be few people who have been given this punishment, but it's not as common as the non-Muslims think it will be. I'm asking the question that if you implement the Islamic Sharia in America, which happens to have the maximum rate of crime, and it's supposed to be an advanced country, but yet the crime rate is very high. If you implement the Islamic Sharia, that every rich person should give 2.5% of his excess wealth in charity to the poor people. And after that, if anybody robs in America, chop off his or her hand as a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am asking the question. Will the rate of crime theft in America, will it increase? Will it remain the same or will it decrease? but natural, it will decrease. It's a practical law. You implement the Sharia and you get results. That is the reason the least rate of crime and theft in any country in the world, it's in Saudi Arabia. Let me give you another example. That most of the religions say that you should not rape, you should not molest a lady. Islam says the same. But the difference between Islam and the other ways of life is that Islam, besides saying that you should not rape or molest any woman, it shows you a system of hijab. First the Holy Quran speaks about the hijab for the man and then for the woman. The Quran says in Surah Noor, chapter 24, verse number 30, that say to the believing man that he should lower his gaze and guard his modesty. The moment he looks at any woman and any base and thought comes in his mind, the Holy Quran says that he should lower his gaze. And the next verse, that is Surah Nur, chapter 24, verse number 31 says, that say to the believing woman that she should lower her gaze and guard her modesty and display not her beauty except what appears ordinarily of and to draw her veil over the bosom except in front of her husband, her son, her father and a list of mahram, the close relatives who she can't marry is given. 